G'day, how are we all doing today? I'm well. I'm currently drinking a coffee on my day off. I've been writing a horror film all day. G'day, welcome back. Let's talk about this grade that I have going on here. Halfway through, I realized it was inspired by that movie, Old. So if you haven't seen Old, it's basically about a film where people go to the beach and they get old. It's okay. Anyway, I really like the look of this film. So halfway through, I sort of like started leaning towards that way. And I'll just do a breakdown of the grade. So this look actually came about by an accident. I was designing a new LUT and uh, it actually worked really well for this footage. So I thought I'd go with the flow and keep grading as I went. So basically what we have here is we have some 8K red Monstro footage. So at least some really nice looking footage. So I've done my initial IDT here. So we're going from red wide gamut RGB, red log 3G10. And then my color space is DaVinci wide gamut, DaVinci intermediate. And then for my output device transfer, I am going back from that DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, Rec 709, Gamma 2.4, Luminance Mapping at Max, Custom Max Output. I mean, this is all pretty much you do the same thing every single time. Unless you are doing for a YouTube video, then you might want to go to Gamma 2.2, not 2.4. But I have a color corrected monitor, so I like to be in Gamma 2.4. So this is where our image is currently sitting at. So we have a warm looking man here hanging around on the beach with his lady friend over here. Are oh, they lady friends? Cause I hold hands. And all in all, it just looks like a really nice pleasant day. So I thought let's make it look like they're having an unpleasant day. So now the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to grade underneath that LUT because it's always important to do your LUT first and then work underneath it. Then we turn that LUT on and we have a much different looking image. So we can see by his skin tone has changed a lot. This color has changed a lot. All in all, the image has been brought down a lot. It's got a lot darker. It's got a lot of moodier, I would say. So it's sitting in a really nice spot off and on. And we've got a nice density in our colors. We've also desaturated some of the other colors in our image here. So if we look at the reds here and our blues, they've actually been desaturated just a little bit. And pay attention to these reds because these reds are a different type of color. But once we put that LUT on, they are much more muted and much more dense. And I really like the look of that. It looks very filmic. So I really like the way the LUT is handling this footage. We are already in a nice spot, but obviously we can do more. The next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to concentrate on the skin tones because I felt like they were a little bit sharp and I wanted them just to be a little bit softer. So I've done a node here. And if we go right in and all we're really doing is just taking some of the detail down. So I've just done a simple mid-tone detail negative push here. So off, on. You probably can't see it in YouTube, but it's just kind of softening out this man's skin and obviously hers, but I can't even see her really. Now moving on to my next node, and I should have said this at the start, but I work in a fixed node structure here. So we've got exposure, contrast, balance, Saturation versus hue, and I'll get into this one a little bit later. And a little bit of exposure change here. And then we have a secondary one. So we're working in our hue for our sky and our skin tone here. But with our exposure here, let's go full screen. So this is with that node still on, and that's with it off. So I've just sort of brought it up just a little bit. I thought it was maybe a little bit too dark. So we don't want to go full horror straight away. So I thought, let's just push it up just a little bit. With my contrast, I didn't change anything because I thought the LUT was doing enough, so I really didn't need to do anything. Um, it was already sitting in a pretty good spot, to be honest. Any more contrast, it might come across as digital looking, and I didn't want that to happen. I like the contrast where it is sitting now, so I thought I'll just leave it. Now, with my balance, I thought I would change it around a little bit, go more of a horror vibe. So obviously, we've pushed towards that green a little bit more, and actually, I'll bring up my vector scope here. So in our vector scope here, we're really pushing towards that ready orange type of look and a little bit of cyan, which of course are the shorts and the sky. Now if we turn that node on, we are pushing more towards the yellow and green area in the cyan. We've still got this red and that's probably his little towel here and round here and here. So we're going much more horror look, I would say. So let's go full screen. We still have a very warm, happy times and then turning it on. So now we have a much more kind of unnerving looking image. We, we're really pushing those greens out a lot more. His skin tones are still sitting in a good spot, which is really important. All in all, it's much more threatening, this type of color. You will actually see a lot of green in horror color grading. That's because the human eye sees more shades of green than any other color. This dates back a long time. It's a bit hard to explain, but 
it is something that is inferent of danger. So if you see a green a lot, it makes you feel unnervy, and that's why it's used a lot in horror films. Okay, so we're off to a pretty good start here. We have a nice looking image, but of course we can always do more. We can change this image around. So we have to make it even more unnervy. Now in my saturation hue, I'm actually using a DCTL by Monograde. I'll leave a link below. This is fantastic. If you don't have it and you can afford it, I'd highly recommend getting it. It is just amazing. So if we go full screen, oh, actually we'll go through it real quick. So obviously I've taken that red density and pushed it up to get a dense looking image. I've changed the, uh, what is it? The uh, yellow density, the cyan I've brought down a little bit, taking that saturation out and I've actually increased the density of the cyan. So I haven't done all that much, but if we go full screen here, that's with it off. And that's with it on. So we've just sort of taken out some saturation, but we'll bring it all down just a little bit. And it's really sort of like bringing that image together. And we're really starting to get that unnervy look about the um, image here. Let's move along to our exposure bump. So all I've done here is just brought that exposure down a little bit. I'm not sure why I called it bump when we're actually bringing down that exposure. But if you ever noticed in modern color grading, daylight is always really far down. It's never all the way up. So it's what I mean by that is it's never super bright. So all I've done is just taken some of those highlights and then pushed them down a little bit, just using my um, curves down here. Okay, let's move on now. So in my secondaries here, we'll go to the skin node here and, oh, actually I'm using a DCTL, I forgot. So I'm using a three by three matrix by Nico. Uh, I forget his last name, sorry. I'll leave a uh, link down below. He has an amazing website, make sure to check it out. I'm not sponsored by any of these people, by the way. So if we have this node off, that's what it looks like. And then on, all we're doing is adding a little bit more texture to that skin. But nothing really major, but all I'm sort of doing is just putting his skin in a less red space, if that makes sense. So at the moment, to me, it looked a little bit red. All I'm doing is just taking some of that red out and making his face all in all look a lot better. I actually go right in to get a better look. So this, <laughs> sorry, this is with that node off. And then on, and as you can see, we're just sort of pulling that red out and we're putting it in a much more pleasing spot or a much more horror spot. So we're moving away from that kind of commercial look into a more unpleasant look. So all I've done here is push some blue into the green, minus the red in the blue, you know, et cetera, et cetera. These are my little settings up here. So I'm just sort of changing those colors around to get in a place that I really like. So if we actually pull up the still from the other film, so looking at this image here, we can really see we're matching in terms of these blue. Our skin tone is a little bit off, but we're very similar when it comes to our skin tone around here. And around here is looking really good. So all in all, we are pretty close. I would say the only thing different is definitely the sky, but it's really hard to work with this guy, to be honest. It was sitting in a really weird spot. And I only decided halfway through this grade that I wanted to match, well, get close to this grade here. So now I was like, I forget about it. I'm not gonna do this guy. I'll just leave it as is. We're getting in a really nice spot. And I think all in all, it's looking like a really good horror grade when it comes to this image here. Speaking of the sky, the next thing I wanted to do was use a DCTL. Again, it is the same guy, mono grades, and I'll leave a link below. And all I'm doing here is actually just changing the cyan in our sky here. So if we bring this bad boy up, so this is with that node off and then on. And actually what we're doing here is basically just changing the sky color and his shorts because I felt like it looked a little bit too commercial, looks a little bit too happy. And now we've gone from here to here and it looks a lot more unpleasing, which is what I want to go for, which I know is a weird thing to say in color grading, but it is what it is. Then in my final note, all I've done is put on some grain. So we play this image back. We have that nice grain playing out. So again, we're just sort of enhancing the image as we go along. So I'll just show you my settings for the green. Come up here, I'm using a custom one. It was set at 16500T, I think. And then what I've made sure to do is basically take it all out of the shadows, push up the midtones a little bit, and then in the highlights, because that's how grain actually acts when it comes to film. It's not in the shadows. Uh, I brought my grain size down a little bit because I don't really like big chunky grain. And I've just changed the uh, texture here and brought the opacity down just a little bit because I didn't want it to be too overpowering. So again, off and on, pretty simple stuff. So in my last node, I'm using a skin checker by Monograde again. 
Sorry to uh, keep harping on about them, but they're really good. And all I'm basically doing is turning it on and then I just change my balance a little bit. So the skin checker kind of works like you want your skin to be in that yellowy kind of area here. And that means it's sitting in a good spot. But the way I looked at it was I just tried to match it from the other movie. So which his skin was sitting in the same spot. So it might look like it's sitting in a good spot, but it is actually sitting in the spot that I wanted to. So I was really happy with how that was working. So let's just turn everything off. This is our image at the start. Obviously it's very flat, very boring. And we turn all those nodes back on. We have a completely different look and it looks really, really good. I really like the way his skin tones are sitting. I like the way it has this kind of unnerving feel to it. You can just imagine someone walking up over here, having a bit of a chat. I like that type of stuff. Maybe saying some threatening things. I don't know. What would I know? I'm only writing a horror film. <laughs> Does that mean I'm going to make a good horror film? Yeah, that's it. Uh, this is my day off today, but I thought I'd smash out a video just for something to do. I thought I'd take a break from writing my horror film. It's going to be pretty good, I hope. It's going to be set in the early 1900s. I've already got type of look that I'm going to go for. It's going to be shot on 50D film, 16 millimeter. Um, if you want to know more, leave a comment below and we'll have a bit of a chit chat about it on the video. But anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day. Let me know what you're up to. Let me know what color grading you're up to or anything you want to see. I've been Drew from Haiti Films and thanks again.